this is the X2 Bluetooth by GameSir. It's the successor to the previous wireless controller which was USB compatible mainly for Android devices. This is going to be great for my iPhone 12 Pro so that's what I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and open this up. You get a very nice hard carry case which is always great for portability. So there you have the controller and an accessories box. So just before I look into that, let's see what accessories we have in play. You have a USB-C charging cable. Now this is a 500 milliamp hour battery, which gives you so many hours of continuous gaming. You also have some silicone rubber grips for the joysticks. A really cool shiny metallic blue and red games logo sticker, a social media sharing card and the user manual. Now taking a closer look at the controller itself, it's this nice space grey colour. You can see there is some soft rubber grips at the back. When you're holding it, it's a very nice ergonomic fit. And this actually stretches to a little over 17 centimeters, so it's perfect to fit even the largest of phones. Now, like I mentioned, I will fit my iPhone 12 Pro in there. Before I go on to do that, let me just show you the buttons. So at the bottom here, you have yourself the USB-C charging port. This is the home button which you'll actually use to power on the device. Of course, these are very similar to Xbox controller buttons, so you've got two joysticks left and right. You have the G and the S button. You've got the directional arrow buttons there, A, X, Y, B on the right. And then you have this button here on the left. This is actually a screenshot button. So if you're playing a game and it looks really good for whatever you're doing, you can press that. It will take a screenshot on your phone and then you can share that to all of your social media. At the top, you have your R1, R2 there, and L1, L2. So pretty straightforward. And I really like this fact that the joysticks are on opposite ends. So this really tailors towards anyone's preference, whether they have the joysticks a little bit higher up or a little bit lower down. It caters for both of them. So the one thing I really like about it, there is no connector for your phone. So it is Bluetooth. So whether you have an Android phone or an iPhone, this should work absolutely fine. So when you turn this on for the first time to pair it to your phone, all you have to do is hold down the home button there and the B button on the right hand side. So let me go ahead and do that. You'll see there's some LED indicators. There's a green light to show that it's on and there's a purple light that's flashing. If it's slow flashing, it's now going into Bluetooth mode. And as you can see, a Bluetooth pairing request has popped up. This basically is telling me to connect to the Xbox wireless controller. So you click on pair. As you can see, it's now connected and I can now start playing some games with it. There is a compatibility list of some games. So what I recommend is only use this for games that are MFI compatible, MFI being made for iPhone, and there's a whole list of them. So plenty of options. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can find a full list of games, but I will be testing it with two very popular games. Let me go ahead and mount my phone onto here. Like so, very easy to do so. And the first game I'm going to load up is Asphalt 9. I'm a huge fan of racing games and this would be really great with that. Now that it is connected as an Xbox controller, it should automatically be detected by the game to say that there's a controller connected. So you can now you start using the joystick and the buttons to control the racing. One other thing, there's a little reserved gap just beneath the phone there and the actual gamepad. This is really good because it allows for a bit of air cooling so your phone doesn't heat up too much. As you can see straight away, I'm using the button, I didn't really need to do anything. You can also go into settings, go into game settings, and then go to controls. Here you can see gamepad has now been selected, and you can also switch to the gamepad being manual drive instead of a touch drive. So for this purpose, I'll just leave it as touch drive, and let's start the race. So I'll now use the buttons. I can use my nitros with the R2 button at the back. And this gives you some instructions as well.
there you go very easy to set up and the gameplay is super smooth it's so much easier to play with the gamepad like this i'm so impressed that i really didn't need to do anything else no fiddling about and it just automatically detects the controller and assigns all of the buttons accordingly to the actual gameplay now one other game i'm just going to showcase to you is call of duty so in here you can just double check to see the controller is connected if you go into settings then you go into controller you'll see there's the different types of controls for each of the buttons if you go into settings you'll be able to see that the controller is connected and also that the game has the controller support connected as well so now that's up and running let's go ahead and start a multiplayer So there you go, it's super impressive, the gameplay was so smooth, there was no lag whatsoever and the response time between the buttons and the actual gameplay was pretty much instant. Now if you did want to use this gamepad to control a game that isn't supported by it, you can still do that by using G-Touch. In order to do that, you have to make sure that the gamepad is turned off, so let me go ahead hold down the home button and it turns off as you can see the light indicator. The next time you turn it on by the way, it will automatically be connected so you wouldn't have to connect it to the Xbox controller on your Bluetooth settings every time. But if you wanted to use G-Touch, all you have to do this time is hold the home button there at the bottom and press the G button which is just here on the top left. So let me go ahead and do that. Now the difference here, the light that's flashing is actually blue instead of purple. The purple one is to connect for the Xbox controller, the blue one is for G-Touch. Now you'd have to set up a separate Bluetooth for this and as you can see this comes up with the option GameSir-X2. This is the one you connect to, you pair it and the light will be solid blue. Then you go into the GameSir app so you need to download this and then you connect it and then as you can see it's connected X2 GF8 is now there at the top. Gives you an indication of the battery percentage as well. Then you go into G-Touch. Now there might be some compatibility issues for iPhones that have the iOS 13.4 or higher. So make sure you double check that. But here let's say for example you can search for a game and do any manual mapping to the buttons on the controller. So let's say for example Life After, you just go into that. And then you can start doing a brand new config to assign the buttons and map it towards that. So there's plenty of options for everyone. Now one other thing I wanted to test is what happens if I actually use my iPhone 12 Pro to stream it wirelessly via AirPlay to my TV and play on a larger screen and see how it performs. So let's see if I can do that. Right, so I've just connected it back onto the Xbox controller and it's now connected to the gamepad and I've got Asphalt 9 and now I'm wirelessly streaming via AirPlay to my TV in landscape mode. And it's working great. It's pretty responsive, as you can see, I'm using the buttons to control the TV. And now I'm going to fire up a race and see how it performs. The main thing I'm looking out for to see is if there's any lag or it's still as smooth as possible. And this is going to be great, especially if you've got a very large TV and you just want some really great gaming on it directly from your phone. Now I'm super impressed with this, using Bluetooth to connect to my phone and then using the phone to use AirPlay to connect to my TV, that's a double connection. I would have expected a lot more lag or any buffering. There's no skipped frames in this and it's super solid. I'm so impressed with the way this works and I'm going to be using this to use on my TV more often than not. That is the benefit of the X2 Bluetooth. So that's it guys, check out GameSir. They provide a lot of top class gaming peripherals from gamepads, mice, keyboards and a whole load of other accessories which as a gamer you'd really like. 
This comes in at just under $60, so I feel like this is a bargain for what it can do. Make sure you check them out, the link is in the description. If you guys want to know anything about this game controller, drop a comment down below. If you like this review and really cool tech reviews, I have new videos out every week. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those ones, and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.